Disclaimer, I am not a tech YouTuber, so don't expect some super high budget Linus tech tip video here, but I do like to dabble in tech videos sometimes. So any tech companies out there that want to sponsor me, hey, how you doing? Anyway, make sure to like and subscribe and let's get into it, shall we? So there's been one question myself and the BeamNG devs have been getting since the beginning of BeamNG's existence. When is BeamNG Drive coming to consoles? Well, for a multitude of reasons, probably not for a while, if at all. BeamNG has been in early access for over a decade at this point, so really, I'd be willing to bet a console port is nowhere to be seen in the dev team's roadmap. At least not anytime soon. I'd like to believe that one day we will see some version of BeamNG Drive hit the console market, but again, probably not anytime soon. But the idea of playing BeamNG Drive from my couch on a massive screen away from my nerd cave just sounds so good that I decided to build the next best thing to a console version of BeamNG Drive, which would be a tiny, overpowered PC about the size of a PS5. A PS5 on steroids if you will. And I only have one goal for this build. The PC needs to be able to play BeamNG Drive in 4K at a stable 60 frames per second. And only 60 because that's the maximum FPS my TV can push out, unfortunately. So basically, we're making a modern day Steam machine. You guys remember those? Now, obviously, BeamNG Drive is a power hungry game, so the parts we choose are going to be pretty important. I'm basing this build, well, not really basing, pretty much copying part for part a build from the YouTube YouTuber Spectre for shout out. The parts he chose should be just about perfect for what we're trying to do here. So onto the build for the case, we're going with a Fractal Ridge, an absolutely tiny little ITX case, but you'd be surprised how much firepower you can fit in this little thing. I also like this case because it's pretty unassuming looking. It doesn't have that famous gamer aesthetic, if you know what I mean. I want this PC to blend in well with the other consoles in the entertainment center, and most importantly, get the seal of approval from the wife. As for the motherboard and CPU, we have an ASRock B650i Lightning paired with a Ryzen 7 7800X3D. The motherboard has pretty much everything I need, a fast Wi-Fi chip being the most important since it would look, uh, not great to have an ethernet cord running through my living room. For storage, since the only thing that's going to be stored on this computer is my Steam library, a two terabyte crucial M.2 drive should be enough for what I need. And you know, if I somehow fill this thing up with BeamNG mods, well, we can always upgrade in the future. It's one of the best things about PC gaming, the upgradability. Fun fact, I forgot to take off the tape on the bottom of the heat sink for the SSD at first, but uh, don't worry, I got it. And as you might know, BeamNG is a very CPU intensive game, but the 7800X 3D should be able to handle pretty much anything we throw at it. At least here's hoping it can. It's not the biggest, baddest, most expensive CPU on the market, but it has a pretty good reputation as being the best for gaming. So that's good enough for me, uh, since I'm really not using this PC for productivity anyways. For the RAM, I picked up 32 gigabytes of Corsair Vengeance DDR5. It's fairly cheap and low profile, so pretty perfect uh, for a build with so little space to work with. And for the cooler, we are going with the Noctua NHL12S. I know a lot of people aren't fans, not pun intended, of the Noctua's brown color scheming, but I actually really adore it, even though it doesn't really matter because we're not going to be seeing it anyways. I went with air cooling because overall it's much easier to install uh, than an AIO and a lot less risky to me. And the whole fact that I straight up wouldn't have space for the GPU uh, if I went that route. So air cooling all the way. And for the powerhouse of the build, we are going with an MSI 4070 Ti Super graphics card. Now this thing is not small at all, but trust me, we're fitting this thing in the PC, I promise. And actually you can fit pretty much any GPU into this case, even a 4090 but you'd have to sacrifice two case fans up top. So we are basically going with as big and bad a graphics card we can go uh, without having to take the fans out. And after connecting the power supply and a lot of wire stuffing, reassembly and troubleshooting, that'll pretty much do it for the build. Overall, I had a great time building in this case. Of course, there isn't a lot of room in it given how small it is. So cable management is a bit of a pain, uh, but it should be ready to go. It's really crazy to think how much power fits into such a little case like this. Comparing it to a PS5 really brings it into focus because it's like five times 
more powerful than the PlayStation based on my guesstimations. Now, the one thing I was a little timid about during this build was CPU temps because, of course, it's recommended uh, to position this PC vertically, but I really wanted it to feel like just another gaming console in my living room, so I'm actually going to position it horizontally. And of course, this is going to ruin the airflow at the bottom of the case quite a bit. And uh, the default stand that comes with it blocks like half the ventilation on the bottom. So I picked up these little metal feet to use instead off Amazon to give this case as much air as it can possibly get. And when it's all said and done, I gotta say it looks pretty great set up in the living room. I considered getting the black model for the Ridge, but black tends to be quite the dust magnet and uh, the white really matches the PS5 opposite perfectly. So I am really pretty happy with it. So I have the PC set up in such a way that when you turn it on, it opens up straight into Steam big picture mode. So really, I don't even need a mouse and a keyboard. Well, except when the games have launchers that you have to click through to get into the game. I'm talking to you, BeamNG. And supposedly there's even a way to turn on the PC with just an Xbox controller, although I haven't figured out how to do it yet. If anybody knows, let me know down below in the comments. So does this PC accomplish everything I wanted it to? Short answer, yes. Long answer, well, let's get into it. And BeamNG Drive with the frames locked to 60 FPS, ultra settings, and a 4K resolution, this thing performs absolutely phenomenally. Driving around Johnson Valley, one of the most demanding maps on account of those super high resolution rocks. I don't think I ever saw it dip below 60 frames per second. But if you didn't know, the real BeamNG benchmark is West Coast USA with traffic enabled. And I really thought the system would chug even just a little bit, but no, it was smooth as butter. Maybe a few times it dipped down to 58 frames per second, but it wouldn't be noticeable if I wasn't monitoring it. So yes, this beautiful little machine, it can play BeamNG Drive with ultra settings at 4K in my living room. Yes, it's life changing. It truly is. I tried a few other games as well. I thought maybe Cyberpunk, one of the hardest games to run in this day and age, might chug the system a little bit, but no, it ran surprisingly well. With the ray tracing set to high, I was still seeing locked 60 frames per second. And the same with Ghost of Tsushima, ironically a PlayStation game newly released on the PC. I'm fairly positive I could have squeezed 120 FPS out of it if I wanted to, but again, TV only goes to 60. Hey, LG, if you're watching, <clears throat> hit me up. I know you make gaming TVs. I will shill your products. But to be honest with you guys, probably my favorite part about this build is that I get to experience PC gaming with my entire family. They don't have to crowd around my office desk to watch dad play BeamNG Drive. And you know, you really can't put a price on that, can you? But hey, I'll do it anyway. Why not? Let's break down how much you got to cough up if you want to play BeamNG Drive in your living room. So here is the chart of how much I paid for everything for this build. I said this PC was probably like five times as powerful as a PS5. And hey, good news, you only have to pay around four times as much. But seriously, this is an insanely powerful little PC and it's going to get a lot of use out of me and my family. That's for sure. But hey, have any of you wanted to dabble into PC gaming, but don't want to go through the hassle of building? Well, as you might know, I've been partnered up with Apex Gaming PCs for a few years now and even have a specialty line of PCs specifically built to play BMG Drive. We worked for weeks configuring the best builds to play BMG without breaking the bank. So if you've been looking for a PC to plunge into the world of BMG or really any other game with the best FPS and best graphics possible, click that link down below and check them out. And of course, if you do pick one up, make sure to use code NEIL at checkout for 10% off. Thanks to Apex Gaming PCs for sponsoring this video. I want to thank you guys for watching and thank all the channel members as well. Without y'all, videos like this would not be possible. I really like making tech videos like this. It seems like every time I post one, it like blows up. It's crazy. So I don't know, maybe I'll post more in the future. Let me know down below what kind of tech videos you guys would like to see for me. I read as many comments as I can, uh, so I'd love to hear your feedback. Like what can I improve for the next time around? Let me know. Anyway, I hope you guys have a great day and I will see you in the next one. Peace.